compact if every open cover that is a collection of open sets that covers E permits a finite subcover, a finite subcollection of that original set, uh, a set of sets that still covers E. So in a two-dimensional type of picture, let's draw us a, a set here. I'm going to claim that this set right here is compact. And so what this definition is really saying is that if we take a whole bunch of open sets that cover this set, let's say there's a set and there's a set, and then we'll put a whole bunch of other sets that are open balls all around this, then notice that even though I'm drawing in all of these extra little open sets, they're really not necessary to cover the space because the original two blue ones that I drew, the one that goes through here and the one that goes through here, completely cover the green set. So what the definition of compact is really saying is that if you have any kind of set of open sets that cover the complete space or complete set, then a finite number of them can be used to cover that same set. Now that's pretty abstract, so let's look at a couple finite examples here. 0, 1, the closed interval is compact, while 0, 1, the open interval is not compact. So this will give you a little bit of a perspective on how you would go about essentially trying to show these, or at least trying to understand what it means. So 0, 1, the closed set being compact. Well, remember 0, 1, the closed set goes from 0 to 1 and includes those endpoints. So let's try to choose a bunch of open sets in R1 here that would cover this, but cover it in an infinite way and maybe not yield a finite subcover. So one instinct or one way that we might be able to do this is maybe consider the sets that go 1 over n, and then consider n minus 1 over n. So notice that if we take these sets for n equals, let's say we'd have to start, we wouldn't be able to go with 2 even, so we'd have to start going from 3, so we have 1 third to 2 thirds, 1 fourth to 3 fourths, etc., going out and out like this, and we're getting infinitely many sets, but notice that they don't even cover all of the closed interval from 0 to 1. If you were going to cover the entire interval from 0 to 1, you would have to include at least one open interval that contains 0, so maybe something like that, and you would have to contain at least one open set that contained one, maybe like that. So now with those two extra orange sets drawn around the endpoints, notice how finitely many of the blue open intervals can be used with those two orange sets to cover the entire space. So this closed interval from 0 to 1 this is not a proof, but this is kind of an understanding of what's going on in a compact set, and essentially why it needs to be closed and bounded. That's Heine Borel's theorem, is that if uh, in Rn in general, if you are, I believe it's in many metric spaces, maybe any metric space, but if you're closed and you're bounded, then you are compact in at least Rn. That's what Heine Borel is. So let's look at 0, 1 and see why that one is not compact. Well, if we go into 0, 1, let's use those exact same sets to try to understand what's going on here going to use 1 over n and n minus 1 over n. Now as the open interval goes from 0 to 1, an unacceptable argument is you can't say, well, this is going to be compact because I'm just going to include whatever sets I want. So I'm going to include, say, a set that goes from negative 1 to 2. Right? Oops, sorry, it has to be open. So negative 1 to 2. So you can't make an argument and say, well, who cares if you're going to take all these blue sets? If you throw in this red set, then this one single red set also covers the space. But remember, the definition of a compact space or compact set is that any collection of open sets yields a finite subcover. So if we look at those blue intervals in this picture, we're still getting that from n equals 3 on. We're getting one third to two thirds, one fourth to three fourths, etc., etc., etc. And as you union these up, union n equals three to infinity of these sets, n minus one to n, you are indeed going to get the entire space from zero to one. But notice that no finite set of these could possibly cover the entire space. It's going to stop somewhere just short of one and just short of zero. 
So 0, 1, the closed interval, is compact. Again, this is Heine Borel formally, but this is kind of an example to better understand it. And the open interval is definitely not compact. Here is a witness. This is one infinite cover of the open set 0 to 1 that does not yield a finite subcover.